is Focus with Jack Cottle. Good evening, I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome to this month's edition of Focus. This month we're talking about the housing market here in the Black Hills. Three guests with us to talk about that. Lisa Mueller is the president of the Black Hills Association of Realtors. Dane Boomsma is the past president of the Black Hills Home Builders Association. And Garth Wadsworth is the public policy director of Elevate Rapid City. A few notes before we get going. Rapid City seeing a big increase in population these days, continuing into the future. That is certainly having an effect on the housing market here. The Elevate Rapid City housing study that came out last year found that 60.8% of the housing units here are single family homes. It also projected the need for 2,000 to 2,800 additional rental units and additional 3,400 to 4,100 additional ownership units by the year 2030. We're going to start with uh, Lisa. Thanks for coming up. As you look at the housing market here in this area, how healthy is the housing market here? Well, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. And our housing market is healthy. However, we still have a shortage of inventory. We still need more housing. Um, our sales are down this year, um, about 15 to 17%. Um, but we, our housing market is still strong in Rapid City. Now, when you talk about sales, are you talking about the number of houses sold? Yes, yes. So um, year to date, we're, um, we've sold about 1,100, uh, between 1,100 and 1,200 homes, but that's down about 17% from last year. Uh, so why less houses coming on the market these days? Well, mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. Mortgage rates are anywhere between 7 and 8%, and that's really affected the housing market. Um, in terms of buyers, most buyers are sitting in their current homes at a rate of 3 to 5%. And so it's a challenge for them to go and buy a home uh, with such a high rate. Um, now there are some ways to get around that. And we're working with our local lenders to make that happen. Now, Dane Boozma is here. Uh, now you're dealing from this from the construction side, the home builder side of this. How healthy is that market in this area these days? You know, it's pretty, pretty similar to uh, what Lisa speaks on the housing market in general. Um, inventory historically the last several years uh, has been uh, low, which is great from a home builder's perspective. As the market has slowed, as, as Lisa indicated with the interest rates, um, we will see over the next three to six months, the new construction inventory um, will definitely begin to trend upwards. Uh, we get a lot of move up buyers from those existing homes, which are not going to happen. Um, we're gonna eliminate a lot of those because of those interest rates, but we may see more buyers in the future based on the fact that that's gonna be the inventory in the next three to six months, just because we, we are continually building right now. Um, we haven't had inventory for the last three to four years. We are just now starting to get some uh, um, houses in our inventory uh, for sale um, going into the future. Now, when you talk about move up buyers, are you talking about people getting out of the home they're in now and moving up to something bigger and better? That's correct. So they're up, they're, they're increasing the size of the home and the dollars of their home. But when they double or triple their interest rate, um, it's not proportionate to what they're getting in the house that so they're going to sit tight for a while. So we're going to see some lag in, in that, you know, from that perspective. Uh, Garth Wadsworth is with Elevate Rapid City, the public policy director. You guys had that big housing study uh, that came out last year. From you, as you look at that, how healthy is the housing market here in this area? Health is relative. It depends on how you're looking to participate in the market. If you're looking to sell a home, obviously higher prices are more beneficial. If you're looking to buy a home, uh, you're hoping to bring some of those costs down. And so we've seen a 50% increase in median list price since the beginning of 2020, combined with the 7 or 8% interest rates. That poses a major challenge to folks looking to get into the housing market, first time home buyers, anyone who's <coughs> looking to build equity and, and get into that first unit. Uh, and so we look at the combination of increased listing prices and increased interest rates and to for afford the average home, uh, a household needs to bring in between eight and $9,000 a month just to be able to afford that average house, which is a challenge for most people in Rapid City. And uh, how do you approach that? How do you, how do you get around that issue? So the state has a, a new program, the Housing Infrastructure Finance Program, where they are investing $200 million in infrastructure related to residential development. Folks in Black Hills have been accessing those funds. It will cover one third of the cost of infrastructure, so that's your roads, water, sewer, to be able to accommodate new housing construction, looking to increase the supply of housing development. Um, and then we're gonna have to look at some of the land use regulations that we have 
look for efficiencies, reduce the lot sizes, be more flexible with how and where we can accommodate new housing development so that we can increase that supply. Uh, now, Lisa, the latest uh, Realtors Association quarterly report you guys had out showed a median sale price of 305000 down a little bit from 2022, uh, with an average of 21 days on the market, up a little bit from 2022. Uh, what are the housing price trends that you're seeing in this area? It's staying relatively steady. Um, our, we have sold pricing that um, up, fluctuates between 1% and 2%, um, but our, our home pricing is relatively steady, steady right now. Uh, from, from a realtor's perspective, is, mm -hmm. is that a good thing? Or do you want to see higher prices, lower prices? Well, um, if we compare ourselves to the national market, national market is trending steady as well. So we're not seeing that uh, large decline um, in home prices. And that's due to our shortage of inventory. We only have about 235 homes on the market right now. And uh, Dane, we talked a little bit earlier about the need for a lot more additional units, both homes and rentals. From the builder's perspective, how prepared are you guys and how, how difficult is it going to be to keep up with that demand? Uh, you know, demand <coughs> sometimes is, is hard to track when you just talk about it statistically. You know, our demand has been very high because we have low inventory. Um, here now we're going to have some inventory, so being able to keep up with the demand that's there today, we can keep up just fine. Um, moving forward with uh, advancements of local industry and things like that, um, the uh, HIF program that uh, Garth referenced uh, will definitely keep us going. And right now what we'll, we'll call a slower market, um, it's gonna keep us moving as far as that infrastructure installation goes. So we're installing uh, or bringing new lots on the market when normally we would probably take a little bit more of a reserve perspective we're going out there and putting that infrastructure in because of the, the state uh, influx of those the funding um, to keep infrastructure going. So I feel like that's going to carry us through this a little bit of a slower market. And when the market does ramp up again, we're not going to be lagging behind. The last time the market slowed, we had two years roughly of inventory of lots. And it took us five years to absorb that. And nobody put in new infrastructure during that five-year period. Now, this slowdown, if it continues to be a slowdown yet to be determined, um, we'll still be installing that infrastructure that there will be no lag in picking up when the market demands again. So that's positive for our state, and that's statewide, really. Now, uh, looking at the building industry, a lot of other industries you're seeing having trouble getting enough people. How's the labor situation in the building industry? Can you it, guys get enough labor? It, it, it's unchanged. So we try to take care of our people and try to keep our good ones around. Um, you know, I, I've said in numerous interviews, we have a pool of people within the Rapid City region. And, and that pool just sort of shifts around from company to company to company. It's all the same number of people doing it. And whether or not there's you know, a demand for 200 houses or 400 houses, it's still our core group of people that are performing the same amount of work. And we hope to grab some outside resources and, and skill wherever we can, but relatively that's a pretty low percentage. So then the other is workforce development from the bottom end, from the younger generation coming up and trying to, and more and more put more efforts into that perspective to try and um, entice some of the younger generations to come into our industry. Uh, are you seeing it? Are they coming in like you'd like them to? We always want more because the demand is there. We need them. We don't, we're not filling all the jobs that we have now. So I don't think that our work is done. We still have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, now inflation has hit everything, including building materials. How has that hit you guys? So building materials is, uh, is pretty comparable to the housing market. It's pretty flat um, and has been for the last year, six months to a year, it's been pretty flat. You know, there was a lot of other increases during um, the last three to four years that we're not going to see come down. So our building prices are pretty similar to the, uh, to the housing market. We as builders, we like to see a little dip in the housing market because our, our construction costs are fixed. We have fixed prices. It costs us X amount. We have to X, pay X amount to keep our help happy, to keep the lights on. And when the new houses are really close to the existing homes, it's easy for them to buy an existing home versus new. If that existing home market dips a little bit, then there's that spread. Um, that helps us uh, in the long run. So, All right, we got to take a break. We'll continue our look at the housing market here in the Black Hills when we continue with this month's edition of Focus. I'm Jack Cotto. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, talking about the housing market here in the Black Hills. Garth Wadsworth is the public policy director of Elevate Rapid City. Garth, you hear a lot of talk about affordable housing what exactly constitutes affordable housing? 
Affordable housing is a challenge. Uh, it just costs more to build a unit than someone on the affordable housing income spectrum can afford to pay. It just doesn't add up. And so by HUD standards, the Housing and Urban Development Department, um, families shouldn't pay more than one third of their total income towards housing costs. So we then adjust housing to the area median income and anyone paying, uh, or, or folks will pay one third of typically 60% of the area median income, and that would be considered affordable housing. 60 to 120% is considered workforce housing. Uh, and so the state has a fixed number of low income housing tax credits that they can use to incentivize the construction and development of affordable housing. It's just shy of 40 units per year. And so if we get about 40 units in Rapid City, we've maxed out the state's incentives to help build uh, that truly affordable housing for families on that lower end of the spectrum. So how much of a shortage of affordable housing is there for people here? We can take all that we can get. <laughs> uh, I don't have the exact figures, but um, I would say roughly 1,200 units on the more affordable end of the spectrum needed in Rapid City. Uh, Lisa Mueller is the president of the Black Hills Association of Realtors. From your perspective, how do you guys look at affordable housing? Well, we do, we do not have enough first-time home buyer homes um, on the market. And so when we look at affordable housing, just like Garth uh, referenced, we really need that infrastructure in place to be able to build those more affordable homes under that 300,000 mark. Even if we could get under the $250,000 mark, it would really help that first-time home buyer and um, our um, even move-down buyers. Um, we just don't have that market uh, at this time. Our average sale price right now is, like we uh, spoke earlier, is about 340000 And so we could really use that smaller price range. Do you see a lot of people that are coming to you looking to buy a house and like this is just out of our range? Where is yes. something that's in my range here? It doesn't exist and they're renting. And so uh, when you look at the influx of apartments, those are home buyers sitting in apartments. We, and, mm -hmm, we, re we truly need that affordable home in our market. And uh, how about from a builder's perspective? Dane Boozma is the past president of the Black Hills Home Builders Association. Uh, in, in terms of building affordable housing, what are the challenges there from the building industry? So there's some creative ideas from the building perspective that maybe you can come up with some affordable housing, tiny homes, less square footage, no garages, things like that. From, from our perspective, really, we need the move up buyers. Mm -hmm. We need those smaller, uh, older homes to come on the market from buyers buying the new homes. Then the first time home buyers are fed by the older homes. So we need those move up buyers that we're not getting because of the interest rates right now. So really the affordability and new construction, it's hard to mesh those two together. Affordability and new construction is hard, unless you're talking the apartment complexes that have the tax credits and things like that that are either subsidized or income driven, uh, that would make them af affordable for uh, that clientele. Uh, now, Garth, as you guys, in your study on affordable housing, how much of a need is there? What is the, are there solutions in town here or around the area to come up with more affordable housing? What are some of the options that they're looking at? We have a handful of uh, light tech projects under construction right now. We had a new project just open off of Omaha Street, uh, close to the swim center. Uh, it's going to go a long way to help families get into the stable housing and let them start to save up money so that they can put that towards a down payment and eventually get into uh, an ownership unit. Uh, there is such a need across the entire spectrum. We need to incentivize housing on the more affordable end, but we also need to address on the higher end so that we do have opportunities to ship people or shift people uh, into those move up units and free up some of the older stock. Uh, Lisa, as a, as a realtor, what kind of programs are out there for people that are looking to get into that first home? Are there, are there things that can help them? There, get there are uh, first time home buyer programs available. South Dakota has, Housing has a program, Neighbor Works, uh, a variety of programs that a local lender can um, help a first time, hire, ho first time home buyer have the ability to um, b get into their first home. Um, and then there's also some, uh, you can do a rate buy down. Um, so there are some options into getting into a home with a lower rate um, for a short time with the intent of rates going down in a few years. Uh, what kind of homes sell best here? What, is there something that really is, is the best <laughs> kind of selling home you have here? And, and are there certain types of homes that are a challenge here? 
Um, well, I think all homes sell well here uh, because there's such a variety. Uh, you have a uh, small ranch style, you have the larger homes, you have homes in the hills. Uh, we have a wide spectrum. And so that's why I, I think we have the shortage of inventory. Everything um, sells when it comes on the market. There's always a buyer. Um, so I don't know that there's a, a popular uh, one or a better one um, because I think they're all great. Now we talked about in Rapid City, how is the market in this area outside of Rapid City? It's fantastic. Uh, it's about the same, Garth, right? Um, it's, uh, it's, our region has, is just booming right now. Um, you know, our, it's, it's done well uh, through COVID and it's continued to sustain. Um, even though we're down uh, from last year, it's still, it's still sustaining and our market's doing well, relatively. And uh, Dame, how do you see this progressing down in the future? How optimistic are you for the next five, 10 years? Like you said, we needed this many housing units by 2030. Yeah, you know, our housing market is historically sick, is cyclic, and that's nationally. You know, our peaks and valleys are uh, less extreme in our area, which we're very fortunate and, and, and grateful for. Um, I feel like moving uh, forward that a uh, little bit of a correction is never a bad thing. Um, you get a few bad eggs when the market is too good, if you will. And so those of us that are uh, well established and uh, just going to grind it out and, and be here uh, through the good times and the bad times and enjoy the Black Hills, I think it's going to be great. I, I really have uh, no ill or bad perspective in the next year to two to three years. Uh, now, Garth, for people who either can't or choose not to become a homeowner, what is the rental market? look like around here? Rent growth has slowed down, but that's coming off of two boom years where we were seeing double digit increases in rent year over year. Uh, and so vacancies are up just a little bit. Obviously, Rapid City's hot market, 10 to 12% increases in rent drew a lot of people to the market. There's been some major investments. We're having a number of units come online. We're up to a eight to 9% vacancy rate. That is not a bad thing. That gives people the opportunity to move around. It's going to come down once these units hit the market and are absorbed and things have a, a, f a few months to settle. Uh, and so we do expect that to come down. Rent growth is still up, which puts pressure on folks you know, facing budget challenges from inflation. Uh, but it's not what it was 12 months ago. Now, how about we talked about the price of affordable housing home ownership. How about affordable rent? Where does that sit? So the median rent in Rapid City right now is about $1,200 per unit. That obviously ranges from about $900 for a studio to $1,100 for a one-bedroom, $1,300 for a three-bedroom. Depends on what you're in the market for. Um, again, with such a shortage, such a lack of inventory and interest rates, uh, it's difficult to build new apartments for what people can afford. And so anytime you're adding additional rental inventory, it's coming in on the higher end of that spectrum. All right, we've got to take another break. We'll continue our look at the housing market here in the Black Hills when we continue with this month's edition of Focus. And welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, talking about the housing market here in the Black Hills. Dane Boomsma is the past president of the Black Hills Home Builders Association. During the break, talking about one of the big challenges you guys have to deal with is regulation and mm -hmm. rules and all that kind of stuff. How does that play into what you guys are doing? So, so yeah, government affairs is something that we're very strong in as an association, and, and that's just trying to control the over-regulating from lobbyists and things like that, not only at a national level, but a local level. And so we feel like it's our job to make sure that we stand up for our industry and make sure we're not over-regulating. And one of the uh, things that we've done in the local uh, legislature at the state level, not local, but our local state, is that uh, every single code that's implemented has to have a cost associated with it. And so we cannot adopt a code, the local governments or the state government cannot adopt a code without associating or ear taking what is this going to cost every homeowner that this affects. Because um, every thousand dollars in a house eliminates, especially now with interest rates, a big group of people. So that's one thing that we're constantly on the lookout for is new ideas how to either control the regulation or introduce new products that maybe are more economical um, than what is traditional in our local area. So how much is that ended up adding on to the price of a house that you guys are building? Oh, I mean, one electrical code, for example, if we have to add GFIs to areas of the home that used to not have GFIs, we can add 1500 to $2,500 in a house, one code right now, which again, every 
thousand to three thousand dollars it's hundreds of thousands of people nationally that are disqualified from being able to afford that home uh, Garth Wadsworth is the public policy director of Elevate Rapid City. Uh, population is growing here. The B-21 arriving before too long out at Ellsworth Air Force Base. How does that population growth play into the housing market and what effect is it going to have once we really start to build again? So it is driving the demand for the housing market. Uh, we had roughly 2,600 people move to Rapid City uh, in 2022. That makes Rapid City the second fastest growing city in the Midwest. Uh, there's a, about 3,700 people who move to the Black Hills regional. Uh, and so it's driving the market. This is all ahead of the additional 1,000 units that we expect to need to bring online for the Ellsworth expansion and the B-21 mission. So add that to the growth that we're already struggling to meet uh, and we're further in the hole. Uh, Lisa Mueller is the president of the Black Hills Association of Realtors. You said uh, your biggest challenge right now, interest rates. It's interest rates, yes. Uh, when you're dealing with rates between 7 and 8%, um, it really puts a lot of people out of the market, um, creates a challenge for um, realtors, creates a challenge for builders, creates a challenge for lenders, and of course for buyers and sellers. But our market is still strong, our market is steady, and we're doing well in the Rapid City and Black Hills area. What kind of outlook do you have for those interest rates over the next year, or is it anybody's guess? Uh, I, would I would love to say um, that they will uh, go down or at least stay where they're at, um, but I think at this point it's anyone's guess. A year ago, we thought they would never go this high, um, so we're hoping that they will be going down and softening a little bit um, and continue to soften as we move forward. And uh, how are we doing as far as sellers getting their asking price? Or is, are they coming close to that these days? Uh, well, we have to be a little bit more realistic in pricing. A year ago, we were still seeing multiple offers. We were seeing offers over asking price. We are not seeing that anymore. Uh, we are really narrowing down that pricing point. Um, and you may see sellers be paying for a rate buy down or some type of concessions, um, but uh, still getting relatively strong pr pricing. Um, sellers are getting strong pricing, buyers are getting some concessions, um, so it's working out for both. For what you see, how does the, rap, the market here compared to other places in South Dakota, other cities of this size around the country? Well, if we compare ourselves to Sioux Falls, I think we're relatively similar in terms of uh, price points. Um, you know, we're down 15%. I would say Sioux Falls is probably down 15 to 20%. On a national average, nationally, we're down 15%. Um, the median sale price nationally is 394,000. So our pricing is a little bit under median sale price. Um, so we are trending uh, nationally within, um, you know, we're trending within that perspective. Uh, how about from a builder's perspective? How does it compare the, the atmosphere and the climate for building here compared to other parts around the state and around the country? You know, we get feedback that maybe we're a little higher priced on our new construction homes, but you have to remember that we're kind of in the center of the nation. Not kind of, we are. Um, so everything, all of our supplies get trucked in. So we may have a little bit more uh, cost involved in some of those uh, products that it takes to get here. But again, I think that uh, we get both perspectives. Some people are really impressed with our pricing here and some people say you're a little bit higher priced than what I'm used to. So being right in the middle is a good place to be. We have a great place to live, uh, work, breathe. Uh, we have challenges in our area. You know, you come to the Black Hills and you want five acres in the trees. Well. <laughs> Everybody does. So <laughs> a lot of times our challenge is, is finding that right lot for the, for the, for the client to uh, build on. Once we identify that lot, the rest goes pretty smooth. All right. We are out of time. Lisa Mueller, Dane Boomsma, and Garth Wadsworth. I want to thank you guys for joining us, and uh, hopefully the interest rates will come That's down. Right. Thank you. Do it. thank you. Thank you for joining us again. Hope to see you again the first Sunday night of next month for another edition of Focus. Good night.